Hey everyone, my mom's going to read chapter 13 in a nest for Celeste with permission from Harper Collins Publishers. Chapter 13, The River. Mr. Audubon's deep voice shouted from downstairs, Joseph, let's go. Celeste could feel Joseph's heartbeat as she was jostled and swung back and forth in the shirt pocket. <clears throat> She felt each jolt and bump as Joseph bolted down the stairs two at a time. The front door slammed. She knew they had left the house, but didn't know where they were heading. She heard the snorts and footsteps of several horses. After a while, the rocking and swaying of the shirt pocket lulled her to sleep. Later, when loud voices woke her, curiosity got the best of her. She hung her paw over the edge of the pocket finding a grip in the buttonhole. She nosed her way under the pocket flap and saw that the men had tied the horses in the shade of some trees next to a river. Surrounding them was a forest of cane, tall grass that stretched up and up, taller even than the horses. A breeze was blowing in the, off the river and the cane swayed and rustled like a million petticoats. That grass would make quite a basket, thought Celeste. The men were soon boarding a small raft. Joseph and Mr. Audubon and some other men began pulling the craft out into the river. Dash was at the front of the boat, wagging her tail and looking excited. A large expanse of water opened out in front of them, searching for nearly as far as Celeste could see. Huge trees, some larger than a plantation house, lined the river on either side. Thousands of birds, some dark, some light, some long-necked, some short-necked, but thousands of them floated in groups forming a giant carpet on the water. Some chased and skittered and paddled one after another or dabbled their bills across the surface of the water. Some sat and busily preened their feathers. Others napped contentedly in the sun. The air was filled with the din of quacks and honks and whistles. Above, Hundreds and hundreds of more water, more were cascading from the skies, angling their wings and tails and drooping, splashing onto the water of the surface of the river with feet braced for a water landing. Celeste was thrilled. The breeze off the river was fresh and exhilarating, the clamor and activity on the water exciting. She gripped Joseph's buttonhole tightly feeling strangely proud to be in a partnership with him on such a full day of possibilities. She was on a real adventure. After pulling some distance out onto the river, she noticed the men were busy, were busying themselves with their guns. She smelled something new, something acrid and pungent and biting in her nostrils. Her whiskers twitched with apprehension. Flat butter perched a flock of ducks Celeste could plainly see the faces and feather patterns of the closest ones. Suddenly, in less time than it takes to blink, she heard an enormous crack. Celeste squealed and burrowed deep into the shirt pocket just as another blast sounded. Got him, she heard one of the men yell. Me too, yelled another. What are they doing, wondered Celeste. <clears throat> she was shaking and wild-eyed at the bottom of the pocket. She poked her head out again and was immediately sorry that she had. Joseph and Mr. Audubon were pulling a dozen or so birds out of the water, the same birds with the beautiful feather patterns that she had been admiring minutes before. The birds' bodies hung limp, drooped, and lifeless. Dash was frantic, barking and sniffing. The remaining flock of birds had lifted from the water with a roar of wings and were flying in chaotic zigzags down the river. Some good specimens, Joseph, Mr. Audubon was saying as they headed back to the shoreline. This till is nearly perfect. The rest, well, fellas, it looks like roast duck for dinner. He tossed the till to Joseph. Hold its head up, he said, and its wings quickly while it's still warm. Joseph held the duck for a moment, cradling its soft body. The breast feathers were still damp from the river, and Joseph could sense the warmth of it. 
of its body on his fingers. He pulled, up the, he pulled the wings up with one hand, supporting the head and neck with the other. In a moment, Audubon had pulled a large sheet of paper from his portfolio and had begun an outline of the flying teal. Joseph and the other men watched as Audubon added more and more details. Contour feathers, spreading tail feathers, eyes, and bill. But Celeste buried back down into the pocket. She had seen enough. There was no more excitement and thrills to the outing on the river. It seemed that all of Audubon's paintings started out this way. The birds were beautiful, alive, and then they were shot from the sky. Thank <laughs> you.